Simon Brown here uh, doing the follow-up webcast for the uh, earlier webcast, an event we did at IG earlier in August, looking at an index trading system. So the plan here is that the the system in its entirety sits on the Just One Lap website. If you go to justonelap.com slash masterclass, you'll find the links to the different systems. This video will get uploaded into the same page that exists right now. Um, and now we do the follow-up. The follow-up, more than anything, we're going to be doing this live. We're going to be looking at at the screens and the like uh, within IG rather than running through um, screenshots, which is what we do for the main webcast. But we've got some PowerPoint slides, so let's initially run with those. Um, so this is the second live follow-up that we're now doing. Uh, importantly, another one on the 20th with a follow-up on the 5th of October, uh, which will be looking at reversal patterns. And then 11 October with a follow-up on the 18th, uh, we are looking at uh, binary options. Not just uh, market binary options, because there's some significant challenges around those, uh, but also looking at, at issues around uh, the political ones. And, and can we create our own almost in a sense, structured product. So those are there, they're up there on the website. You can go and book at justonelap.com slash events. As I mentioned in the first video, uh, typically I'm a very rules-based uh, trader. When we did the CFD system, uh, it wasn't so rules-based, but now we certainly are very much back to rules-based in this one. And we've had some great feedback on, on back testing, and I've done some testing on it as well, uh, which will perhaps enhance the system a bit. So what we're looking for is a... An index trading system can be intraday, day trading, can be end of day, could be weekly, whatever the case may be. Looking at global major industry uh, indices, which would be obviously our local one, uh, US, UK, Europe, uh, which could be DAX, we could trade Nikkei 225, uh, doing long and short trades. Again, a two-step entry system. And what I mean by two-step two, two entry is you get a confirmation, or you get a trigger rather, and then you wait for confirmation. So in this case, the 721 crossover moving average is your trigger. Your confirmation is the next candle will be confirming. Um, it works in pretty much all time frames. When I was day trading back in uh, 05, 06, I was trading it in 5 and 15 minutes, and then I moved to 15 and, and, and hourly charts. Uh, certainly it works. Uh, it will work in the four hour daily. Um, I've never really looked at it in a weekly system, but all things equal, it should work. Uh, as I said, in your day trading, I, five minute charts are, to my mind, too short, too quick, too, too, you know, too much little space, too much little error, and you, you, you get completely killed. They leave zero space for error. So to me, if you want to day trade it, 15 to 60 minutes, otherwise go for four hour or daily is the obviously the really, really lazy in a sense. <clears throat> What's important is we're trading indices. Uh, so the South African uh, 40 cash are the ones coming out. Uh, there's a two rand uh, and some 10 rand contracts as well at IG. But we're not trading rands and cents. We're trading rands and points, if that makes sense. So the example here is the buy and the sell. And we'll look at it in a moment in, in, in the, the website um, where you would buy at 45.339. And if, you, if it went up 100 points, you make 100 points where you're doing two rand a contract or 10 rand contracts. Two rand contracts means you've made two rand a point. Ten rands means you've made ten rand a point. Of course, it goes against you. Well, then you go uh, and lose money. Long or short? Long, you simply buy and profit and moves higher. Short, you sell what you don't own. When you buy, you buy what you don't own and you have a positive position. To go short, you sell what you don't own. You have a negative position and you make a profit to move on a, on a move lower. And then what happens is to exit the position. So you sell two contracts. To close the position, you buy two contracts. So you sell before you buy. So looking at time frames, uh, pretty much across any, we use the simple moving averages, SMA uh, 7 and 21. Uh, IG just call them moving averages. Some folks call them MA, some call them SMA. Uh, crossover is trigger. So when the 7 moves up through the 21 moving average, that is your trigger to buy. Uh, next candle confirms entry on close, assuming it closes higher. Now we can put a small tweak to that. Uh, exit a stop loss as a close below the 21 moving average. Um, and so we need to manage that stop loss manually because we can't put a stop loss in in the IG system that says sell when price below or above if you're short 21 uh, moving average. We can set alert. So we can set an alert on that when it alerts, it then comes through and will tell us. 
So <clears throat> let's uh, get to the system, that screen there. Let's get to the IG platform. Uh, so here is my SA40 cache. Um, First off, you can see I've got the wrong moving averages. I've got a 20, a 50, and a 100. That's what they default to. It did default to one hour, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, but I scroll down here, find my MAs. There are three. I only want two. So I put a, t a take off that tick on the third one. Uh, I make a 21, and I make a 7. Uh, cool, and then they sit there, and and now we're in biz. So, hourly chart, and this is so what we're looking for. And let's zoom in on on this little bit of the market right here. Let's see if I can get that with enough precision. There we go. So here we had the twenty one, the seven go up through the twenty one, uh, which is your trigger. It happened at seven o'clock this morning. Uh, on the eight o'clock candle, it confirmed because your trigger candle, which is that candle there, that is your trigger. The seven moving average went up through the 21 moving average. Not by a heck of a lot, but it did by, if it goes through by a fraction of a point, that counts. That then is a trigger. When do you enter? Well, the next candle that closes green, which would in this case have been that candle there, so you would have entered. And you enter at the close of the candle, because what you need is you need that candle to, to be closing green. And you don't know if it's going to close green until the very first moment. So you would have entered at that point there uh, at a close of 779 would have been your entry. And immediately the next candle would have stopped you out, uh, which is the 9 o'clock candle. When the market came back massively, closed below the 21, you would have got out at the end. You would have got out at 639. So from 779 to 639, you would have taken a 140-point loss in the process. So there's an, a great example of a trade. Well, not a great one. You got stopped out immediately. The trick there is that what we're dealing with here is what we call continuous uh, uh, markets. And I'm going to touch on them in a little more detail and go through. These, the, the IG's platform runs uh, overnight and starts early Monday morning, closes late Friday evening as well. There's some challenges about that. But let us go back and look at some other examples. Here's another example there uh, where we've got the 7 going up through the 21. Um, and in fact, at this point, the 7 is through the 21 at that point there, which is on the 25th at 10 o'clock at night. Now, that was Thursday, so yeah, but I'm not sure we would have been up and around. Technically, that candle there would have been an entry. Uh, and then we would have got stopped at that point there for a small loss. Uh, and now we've got the short trade going through where the 7 has gone down through the 21. Uh, there's my entry trade and my stop would have been at that point there. So certainly in those couple of hours, we've had a tough time of it. Let's zoom out. Oops, I don't want to go out too far. Those we get a vast amount of dirty data. Well, actually, let's go. Someone's saying, can we trade this in other charts? So here's one that did work. Uh, seven went below the 21. Was it that one? Nope. There we get the seven below the 21, which was 9 August, which was a public holiday in our lives. But nonetheless, at 10 o'clock, uh, we come back to the next candle would have been confirmed us. We would have gone short at about close was uh, 425. And that trade would have run and run and run. And I'm not sure where we get stopped on it. We eventually get stopped there, uh, close at about 045. So we made about 400 points on that particular trade there. The exit is the move through and close through the 21 moving average, which happened on that candle there. But let's look at there's other markets that we can potentially trade in this space too. Yep, now I'm in my international account. <clears throat> So indices galore, uh, stock indices. We've obviously got all the UK. We've got all the all the others. I mean, we've we've got more indices. If we go down here, we can actually pull up. There's the watch list I'm looking for, which then pulls me to major indices: FTSE, German 30, which is DAX, Wall Street, uh, US 500. Uh, there's Nasdaq, France, Italy, and so the list goes on. We don't really want to go and start trading Spain, Italy, France. I mean, we can, but but why? You know, there, there's big there's nice big chunky ones that we can trade a lot more efficiently. So he has the US 500, um, which is essentially the S&P 500. 
Let's pull that up. Uh, my 7 and 21 has come back, <clears throat> and it's telling me I have a 100, but it's not visible on the chart. This is your, your uh, um, oh, what am I in? Ah, I'm in a 15 minutes. I thought it looked completely crazy. We dropped to a daily chart. Um, when a market does this and goes sideways, you're going to get fake entries and fake exits, and it's absolutely going to hurt no end at all. Um, there was a 7 going above 21. There would be my confirmation candle at around 27 and a half points. There would have been my exit at around 57 points, so about 30-odd points made there um, on the S&P 500. So some trades happening there. This type of environment, there we go. <clears throat> but even if we look at it there in the hourly chart, it is still looking as 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 messy as hell. This is going to give us uh, 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 absolutely horrid. Uh, good question, Clive. So let's go back to that. Having, having re-entered this morning and been stopped out within the hour or two, when do you re-enter? You wait for completely new signal. So now you're out, now you're waiting. So you'll, you wait for those moving averages to recross, reconfirm, and re-go again. Uh, Peter, can you trade in the RAND account? So the, the SA40, you can trade in the RAND account. If you're going to go and trade the offshore indices, nope, you need to do it in the offshore component. Uh, which currency? I always say to folks, better off doing the um, uh, US, US dollar currencies, just because there's more there that we're likely to trade. A lot of folks say no, simply because of the, the, the logic being that this is very much a, a UK company. IG is, but they certainly give it to us so we can trade in, in, in the different currencies. Uh, and I just, I always trade US dollars because US dollars is where I'm going to default back to. If I'm going to be looking at, at uh, 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 ETFs and the like, I'm going to go back to US dollars and the like. I'm always going to be trading in the US dollar. So this S&P chart is just not fun. The point is having picked your chart to trade, and, he has, and this is a daily chart where pretty much uh, what's it done? About a 20-point range since the middle of July. So for six weeks, we've had about a 20-point range. Uh, maybe I'm not being fair. Maybe it's a 30-point range. That is going to absolutely hurt you. It's nice and daily, but uh, not much fun. If we go to uh, DAX, which is the largest uh, European exchange, uh, I'm not – Ah, that's not what I'm wanting there. I'm not taking into account the FTSE as a European exchange, Brexit and all, and we can debate that. But in Germany, DAX uh, is your large exchange. Kakaron 40 is your next in line. Again, we're looking at daily. Uh, we're getting some nice trends. So you're getting a bit whipsawed here. Have they crossed at that point there? Uh, seven is indeed below 21. There's your short trade, which you would have gone short at the close uh, at 748. Let's call it 9750 just for ease. And you would have got stopped at that point there, which was a thousand and change. So you lost about 300 points on that. It didn't cross back up, interestingly. So we never got another buy signal until that point there. Uh, yep, seven's above 21. Your confirming would have been that candle there, which is a close at 10,110. And you're out of that trade there. So you made about 420 points in that trade. This is a daily chart. Uh, so it's a much more gentle trade. You entered your trade back on 17 July and you got stopped. Were you stopped on that one there? Uh, yes, you were stopped that one on 25 August. So that trade ran for a little over five weeks um, as it went through and, 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 and traded around. What's important is, is we can see this area here where we're going below this, the 21, but we're not actually closing below. So we don't take that as a stop at all. Again, there we don't. Again, there. There's the first time we closed below the 21. Um, and now it's trying to give us a buy signal. They've crossed, and in fact, depending where the DAX would close today, we might get a sorry a, a, a sell signal. We might get a sell signal on the DAX coming through today if it closes below that level there. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, drop them in. A, a couple coming through. Uh, Mike, how many points do you need to make a profit? What is the cost for entry and exit on a, on, on a trade? Um, so typically, you're trading a, a a CFD derivatives over to a CFD 
over a futures product. Uh, ins, and, ins and outs are minimum of 100 Rand. If you're doing, if you're trading in South Africa, you're doing the mini, which is two Rand a contract. Minimum of two contracts, so four Rand a point. So you need uh, 25, 50 points totally covers all of your costs. Uh, Clive, do you stay out as, yeah, so Clive, let's go back to, to, to South Africa, uh, to local. Close that, close that. Get the cash chart. <clears throat> so it's going to pop me back into one hour. Um, so there's the thing. So, yep, we got stopped. And at this point, it then ran again, but we wait for the 721 crossover. So at this point, we are not in a trade. We do not have a trigger trade coming at all. We stay out and we watch it completely from the sidelines until those 7 and 21s move again. There's a lot of theories about, you know, you, it, it went back above the, 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 the trigger one, which was that one. We could re-enter, to my mind, and and two things I'm thinking about here. The first is I, I, ne I never did. When I got spat out, I sat and I waited for the next trade to come along. Um, the, the bigger issue perhaps is, 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 is the continuous trading from IG. I mean, these trades are happening at, at crazy hours of, of, of the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Now we're probably awake at seven o'clock in the morning, but we're probably not in front of our screens. Now there's two things. We can automate this with pro order. Uh, and I've got a video on that. I'll show you the link for that in a moment. But second to that, um, we can also set alerts, and so the alerts work very efficiently. So we want an indicator alert, and we are on a one-hour chart, uh, and we're not on that. We are on uh, – pick my indicator. My indicator would be moving average. Uh, seven is above moving average 21 uh, at the end of the candlestick. Drop me an email, and this is my – 721 alert. So what that would have done this morning at seven o'clock would have would have sent me and then given me the alert. There's another alert that I need to do. Um, and you can add more conditions. But in this case, fine, that's the one hour chart. All is good. Uh, I do it at the end of the candlestick. I do it every time it triggers. I set that alert. That then alerts me when the trigger happens. But now I need to be alerted uh, when my stop loss is happening, which is chart resolution, which is uh, again price. Let's take bid, uh, select indicator, moving average, um, and it's saying when moving average period is okay, it crosses market price. So this is my stop. Um, now, what it will do is is trigger some when I'm not necessarily in a stop, but that alert when MA crosses market price. So basically, when the market price crosses the MA, boom, we're in business and we will get that alert. So those two alerts will now tell me what's happening and when it's happening. Uh, Tony, please explain the guaranteed stop. In so cool, let's go do that. Uh, if you want to enter a trade, we will be a buyer or a seller. We can click on So I'm trading a large contract here. I don't worry about the contract size, full size only. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm happy to accept partial fulls, although because I'm trading one size, it's not going to happen. Uh, current price, I want a market order. In other words, I'll take the price that's there. Price is moving. I'm comfortable with that. Um, where is my stop loss? Let's go and haul that chart out. Let's say I was in a trade. I'm not in a trade right now. But if we were in a trade, where is the stop? Now, the stop is managed in part because I will get that alert, remember, um, but we can also put a guaranteed stop, and particularly for overnight. So when I'm entering that trade, let's say my stop was the 21. The 21 is at 46654, 46654, 46654, um, and you just say, give me guaranteed stop. 
So what the guaranteed stop does is it says that if it trades at that level, it will get you out at that level, zero questions asked. doesn't matter how far down it goes. Now, remember, we are long, but if the market suddenly went to 46 triple zero or 45 or 44 or whatever, then absolutely no stress whatsoever. We have got that guaranteed stop in place. What that guaranteed stop was, if it triggers, will charge me six points for the trigger. So the guaranteed stop is there um, and is working fairly well and will get you out, no questions asked. So this is going to be lacquer for when you're not at your desk. The problem is, of course, quite simple because uh, here's where the point is. Your stop is moving as that 21 MMA, SMA is moving. So you need to update it. So when you're not going to be at your desk for a while, you can stick that in. When you go to bed at night, you can stick that in, kind of put a flaw and give you that guarantee. If you're around, if you can manage it, you can do alerts instead. Um, is the alert a perfect way of doing it? No. I, I would prefer to have the, the, the guaranteed stop. And then, if need be, go every hour and update it. You'll find uh, positions and all of those sitting up at the top here. You also find your various, there's the two alerts that I've just set up there, are both sitting there for if I want to uh, uh, delete them or amend them or anything like that. So my alerts are in place and we can go in and, and adjust our, our guaranteed stop as and when. All well and good. Back in the day when I traded this, it, it worked quite nice. It is a trend-based system. So as we saw with that S&P market a moment ago, the, the, the US 500, when things go sideways, it, it really, really can hurt. Um, and it, it hurts massively. That will happen. So we will get drawdowns. So a couple of things. Some testing. So we can do back testing with IG. Uh, there's a video there. The links to these videos will be uh, on the on the, the the page when I upload them later this afternoon or early this evening. So you don't need to necessarily write it down. Just go to justonelap.com slash masterclass and look for the one in index trading. You'll find the links. We can run our own back testing. Uh, we can also do pro order trading. So pro order trading is that we can program it into the system and just walk away and let it trade. And we can do it with this system uh, because it is 100% mechanical. So my CFD system, we needed to eyeball the chart. So it didn't work. We couldn't do uh, pro order. We also couldn't do it uh, with my lazy system because of the, the although maybe we could with weeklies. Hmm, I need to revisit that. But pro order says you just do it in, in, in absolutely. But then someone who was uh, attended the first uh, webcast on this session went and did some some back testing for us of it. Uh, he says, so this is what he did. One hour time frame, uh, the IG top 40 cash, uh, two micro contracts, because that's the minimum you can trade. So that's four uh, rand per point. 50,000 initial capital. Spready said 25 points, averages 20 during hours and 30 after hours. I, so, oops, oops, oops. Um, let me step back. That to me seems wild, but perhaps I'm not paying enough attention to what's real. What are we sitting at right now? No, I think well, right now we're sitting on a 24. Five spread, aren't we? So, yeah. So uh, let's take that. I mean, this is the stats that he ran. He had 20 months from January 15 to just after the webcast, which was August um, of this year. So there is it. So there's your capital as it comes and goes. What you can see is some fairly three nasty drawdown periods. And at the end of that period, you've made capital. But let's be honest, you haven't made a heck of a lot. You've made uh, you're eight grand up. Now, you fired and forget and did nothing about this. But those you, you you were doing really yeah, you were doing modestly bad drawdown green drawdown green drawdown now drawdowns are a factor of the system I, I remember this and I know this from a fact from when I traded it that drawdown there and that one there are exceedingly unpretty um, the results from it were. <clears throat> 417 trades, 131 winning, losing 286, uh, slightly worse stats than what I had when I traded it. Um, gains and losses, as I said, you came out only with about 8,000. Your max drawdown, 33. Your max run up, 29, 33 and a half, almost two trades per day. Um, so those are the stats for me. And then he had some, some, some thoughts to it. So as he says, high time in the market, absolutely. Um, you are, this is a system that, 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 almost always has you in the market. And in fact, if we didn't have that continuous trading, um, you are almost always in the market. You, you, you're very seldom not in the market because as soon as you're getting stopped, you're about to enter into a, into a new trade. This morning being a case in point where, where you're not. Um, in trending conditions, works incredibly well. And that's one of the issues is that when I traded this in 05, 06, we had a massively strong bull run. Um, 
and it was perhaps that bull run was part of it. What we've seen from the, the, the testing here, which was done, is that this is a market that is pretty much in the last two years and change now more or less gone sideways, although it has gone sideways within a fairly large band. So that should that should uh, uh, make it up for it. It is fairly simple, easy to program. Uh, maximum drawdown is massive. Yeah, 67%. My experience from when I was doing this drawdown, my maximum drawdown was about a third. What do we mean by maximum drawdown? In other words, a losing streak, how much do you lose during that losing streak? So here you lose 67%, which is two thirds of your capital whereas my drawdowns were closer to one third. Now, there's some reasons why I think that might be. I'll get that to a, a second. I had a slightly higher winning ratio, but not much. Mine were in the low 40%. A trending system is going to have a fairly low win ratio. Um, consecutive losses, yep, you get a lot of those. Uh, consecutive winners, I can't remember my strings of winners and, and, and uh, losers. Very poor in ranging markets, absolutely. That's where your, your drawdown comes in. Very, very poor in, 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 in um, uh, those markets. He says, system is too simple to provide consistent returns. Well, I, okay, I, I, I like simple. So he's got some ideas about, about some, of, some of the issues. And, and one of them is that you only take the immediate candle if it confirms and you don't wait. The bigger issue, and I'm going to come back to that one. The bigger issue is the 24-hour market. Um, so particularly, so in the U.S. is trading, it's okay. But the continuous market, so when I traded this, we traded, it was 8.30 to 5.30, trading it straight on Safex. You went to bed at night. What happened overnight is that you might get a gap against you. And the gap against you could sometimes hurt a whole, ch a whole chunk. But you would get that gap against you, and that would potentially hurt. These continuous markets are going to get you, typically, from as soon as the U.S. closes, around 10.30 our time, I'm going to say through to later than 3 a.m., I'm going to say through to perhaps uh, 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning, or even 8.30 when, when our futures market opens, you're going to get a lot of flatlining. And that flatlining is going to cost you. So there we saw it there. And in fact, this trade here was IG's system saying, oh, panic, we're, we're underpriced. Oh, panic, we're overpriced. Okay, now we're in sync because it's in that continuous trading phase. And if we go back, I mean, if we just pick some random periods in time, um, you know, continuous trading is, is I, I get why some folks like it. Um, I was never much a fan of it. There again, we've got, yeah, I mean, you can just tell it's the continuous trading. And then there's this shakeout in the morning. Again, we've got the, the big candles in the morning as the system tries to correct itself. You know, it flies up and then flies down and then says the trend is down. So how do we rectify that? Well, we would rectify it by basically only entering trades up until 5.30. Um, and maybe you, while the U.S. is running, you're happy to do some trades there. You know, if I'm looking there, so this is U.S. We're basically, okay, not fair because the U.S. was flatlined there. Let's go back to a period when the, when the U.S. was perhaps actually moving. Oops. So, again, you can immediately spot our, our middle of the night type of scenarios. Um, and, again, you can immediately spot uh, the 8 o'clock candle. Those 8 o'clock candles are just really horrible. So, here's my thought. Eh? There, there's an arbitrage here on those 8 o'clock candles. We need to go have a, a harder look at it. Um, but there's certainly some possibility for some arbitrages here to, 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 to benefit from those candles. If we can figure out which way they're going to suddenly move. This is a candle that ran uh, 345 points from the open to the highest. Um, from the lowest to the highest went from 460 to 930. And those are giant, giant candles. Was that another early morning? Yep, another 9 a.m. candle. Um, where there's a, a kind of correction to the process. So maybe part of that issue is we say to ourselves, let's just back off from, from, from trading these overnight markets. Trick is, what happens if you're in a trade? Now, what you simply do is you say, you know, you've got your guaranteed stop in place. You, if you're going to get stopped, take the stop. Always, always take the stop. What you are going to do, though, is you're not going to enter new trades during that period. And in truth, you're unlikely to. You're not likely to, you know, get an alert at 2 o'clock in the morning and rush off and enter. So what I would do is say, 
trade the thing from the nine o'clock candle to the six o'clock candle uh, in, in, in the IG environment, or maybe from the eight to the six, but I would say nine to six because that eight o'clock candle is often a killer candle. Um, and then say cheers. And then if you've got to stop, put it in place, go away, come back in the morning. If you then want to carry on trading at night, well, then go trade the US market, which is then running and trade that through to 10 o'clock or so. Uh, but certainly no entries at night. And the trick with that means is that you can't use your, your pro order. You can't automatically program the process into the system because you're going to get stopped and entered during, during overnight markets, and that's going to absolutely hurt. Um, so I, 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 I like the suggestion here, although I would run to even earlier, I would quit it. The other one he said was, what about not entering on the candle if it's not the immediate? So the point being is, and I need to go back, and I need to find a period, and I had one around early July, late June. So, for example, there, the, the 7 and 21 has crossed uh, So and gone down. Have they crossed down? Yes, they have. So that would be your entry candle. Um, but if none of them confirm, if the, if the next candle doesn't confirm lower, you don't touch it. The way the system currently works, it says when you get a buy, the next candle that tra that closes up, whether it be the immediate one next or whether it be two, three, or four hours time, the next one is the one that you jump on the bus. The suggestion here from from here is that no, <clears throat> if the next candle doesn't confirm, the trade is a fail. And I I I I think I might like that. So what he's saying basically is that if the market's strong, your next candle will confirm. And, you know, here we've got the trigger. There's your confirmation. You're off to the races. Now ah, you get stopped a little while later, but you're in biz. There is your short trigger. Um, is that your where's your short trigger? Is that it there? Seven went below 21. Yep. Uh, it closed at uh, 989. Next one closes at 600. So you would have been short there and you would have got that very, very nice short trade. But that one there, if it had been the one. So, in other words, if the next candle doesn't confirm, walk away wait for the next crossover. That reduces your number of trades. It says if the market isn't in a strong trend, then you're going to be in business. What he also said is that you could add something like perhaps a MACD or, or a stochastic or, or something like that um, and use that. I'm not a fan of bringing indicators into it, but what he would suggest is, for example, you add yourself a, a stock standard MACD, and if it's saying going short, you want the MACD to be confirming that trade which it was doing here, uh, and in my buy signal there, it was doing there. I, I, I don't like bringing the indicators, oscillators into it. Um, I'm not massively a fan. I used some MACD in the other one, but I'm not massively a fan of it. So the two takeaways, don't trade overnight. Just walk away. If you get stopped, you stop, but don't, don't enter new trades. Um, and if the, the next candle must confirm, and if it doesn't, again, walk away from the trade. That should improve the stats going forward. <clears throat> um, and, and then he offered some other filters as well. Um, so, you know, again, filters, because this is designed to be a trending system. So you want those trends to be happening. If a market that goes sideways, it absolutely is going to kill you already. Uh, and, and you can add those to try and, and we, what we haven't done is gone through and programmed with these new filters and the like that, that the video of the programming is online at justonelap.com slash masterclass and you can find it all there. So as I said, I like the avoiding of the after hours trading. I like the only take entry in the next candle. If that doesn't confirm, we just walk away and we say, you know what guys, thanks, it's been real, but we're not going to trade it. Ladies and gents, uh, unless there's some more questions coming up or bits and pieces that you want to go and have a look at in particular, uh, we can call it there. Um, what I am going to be doing is doing some more testing on it. And what I will do is for everyone who's in the webcasters, we will drop you a mail when I've done that extra testing, uh, run through the processes, the tweaks on it. I want to see if we can t say to it, don't trade between these hours, just walk away from it um, and leave it alone. And so we'll see how that goes. And then I'll do that and I'll, I'll put that together and I'll send that out to everyone who's in today's webcast or who was in the webcast uh, from earlier in the month. Next session, we're looking at reversal patterns and then in October, 
binary options. Uh, binary options are bad, ugly, and some bits we can use about them. There's the, the key thing we're doing binary options is because they're everywhere you go on Facebook these days, everyone is, is, is trying to sell you binary options. Everyone wants to trade binary options. So we're going to go and, 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 and delve into them. There are a lot of real risks with binary options that I do not like. Uh, so we need to manage those. And then, of course, looking at political binary options with the US election coming up shortly. Uh, contact details for myself and for IG, uh, telephone numbers, emails, uh, et cetera, uh, and then legal disclaimers. Ladies and gents, thanks very much for your time today. Uh, all the best. We will chat again at the next session uh, later in the month. Cheers, all.